Okay, this is the first of what is hopefully a series of flipped GCSE business lessons, which get you to do the work outside of the classroom so that when you do get into class, it's something we can build on. The topic of this session is exchange rates. But what is a flipped lesson? Well, on screen, what you will see is that the work on a topic is done actually outside of the lesson. You hopefully are watching this at home. Bear in mind that it, it is a video, this bit. You will be able to stop it and rewind it and make notes and hopefully use this as a resource that's going to help you understand the topic, this topic being exchange rates. Notoriously tricky for Year 10 and Year 11 students. There's a video tutorial channel that you've no doubt already accessed, YouTube, Horizon Mr Hurst, that's where you'll be able to access these flipped lesson resources. You should also have with you the booklet of activities to accompany the flipped lesson. That's really important. That needs to come into the next lesson completed with hopefully you being something of an expert. The last bullet point there says that the next lesson does rely completely on you having the knowledge from this flipped lesson. So there is no question of you not coming having done it. It is absolutely essential. My planning, your teacher's planning, is based on this flipped lesson. OK, well, let's get on to the topic then. The topic is exchange rates. As I said, it is a tricky topic for Year 10 and Year 11 students. Um, the purpose of this part of exchange rates is to get you to understand, well, exactly what an exchange rate actually is. If we look down those other bullet points as there, you're going to be able to calculate changes in exchange rates after this and working through the activities. And then in the next lesson, we'll be looking at how they might impact on small businesses. OK, so what is an exchange rate? Well, if you've been abroad, you'll know that you will exchange your pounds for the currency of the country you're going to. So if you're going to France or Spain, you'll exchange your pounds for euro. If you're going to America, it will be dollars. On screen is the definition. An exchange rate is the value of one currency in terms of another. It's the price of buying a foreign currency. Now, if we look at an example on screen, we know that today one pound will currently buy you one euro 17. This is the exchange rate, the exchange rate of the pound to the euro. OK, let's have a look at an example then to see how exchange rates work and how they affect small businesses. Right, imagine Michael Smith then owns a bakery here in South Yorkshire. Smith's Bakery, and part of his product range, he makes continental breads. Uh, one of his raw materials that he needs for this bread is wheat, and he gets this wheat from an Italian supplier. Now, the Italian farmer, of course, will want paying in euros. It's no good paying an Italian in pounds. They don't use pounds over in Italy. Now, the wheat costs... 10 euros per bag. That's what the Italian farmer charges. It's whether That's what they charge Italian customers and that's what they charge British or other foreign customers. Now, Smith's Bakery buys 10 bags of wheat per month. That's what he, that's what he needs to make his, uh, his Italian bread. The important point, as I've just said, is that the bakery, Smith's, must pay for this wheat in euros. Now, let's imagine that the exchange rate of the pound to the euro is one pound is one euro twenty. Okay, I've simplified it a little bit from what it actually is today, but that is the exchange rate of the pound to the euro. Now, what happens? Smiths buy ten bags of wheat each month, as we've as we've just seen. Each bag costs 10 euros, so 10 bags cost 100 euros. 10 bags times 10 euro per bag. Now, what we need to know is how much that costs in pounds. Effectively, Smiths need to buy 100 euros to pay for the wheat. 
it buys euros at the exchange rate of one pound to one euro twenty. Now let's have a look at how we do that calculation. Okay, so let us have a look. Let's have a look at how this calculation is made. There's an important thing that you need to know on screen now. When exchanging pounds for a current foreign currency, we need to divide the amount in the foreign currency by the exchange rate. And we know that Smiths need to pay 100 euros for this wheat and that the exchange rate to the pound is 1 euro 20. So if we divide 100 by 1 euro 20, we get 83.33. And what that means is that Smith's Bakery needs to pay 83 pounds 33 pence in pounds for the 10 bags of Italian wheat that it uses each month. So that's how we do the calculation. Now, you might need to rewind that and go through that again and make sure you fully understand how that works. If you're happy and if you're certain with how that calculation is made, well, let's have a look at a little practice question. It's on the screen now. What I suggest you do is that pause the recording now, have a read of that and see if you can identify the right answer. OK, having paused and had some thinking time, hopefully you've now decided what the answer is. And on screen you'll see that the correct answer to this is actually A. Because what happens here? This, this business orders $6,000 worth of materials from a US supplier. Uh, and the current exchange rate to the pound is $1.50. So, using the division calculation that we did on the previous slide, 6,000 divided by 1.5 is 4,000. So, the UK firm buying these materials from the US will actually spend £4,000 at the current exchange rate. OK, so that's... That's how it works for UK businesses that import goods and services from the UK. But what about UK businesses that actually sell their goods and services abroad? They are exporters. They sell exports to foreign customers. There's a definition of exports on the screen. Uh, but let us have a look at a worked example. Right, imagine a UK, Barnsley in fact, UK car dealership. Right, imagine there's a customer in the USA... They've searched online, they've found the perfect car they want. There it is on screen. VW up, it's for sale down the road in the dealership for £10,000. And the US customer wants to buy it. They cannot find the same car anywhere in the US. They must have this car. Right, so the car dealership then wants to sell this car. What about the exchange rate? Where does that come in? Right, Melanie Smith is the New York teacher that wants to buy the car. Obviously, she must pay Hazeldon's in pounds. It's no good paying a UK business in dollars. What would, what would we do with dollars in the, in, in the UK? We couldn't spend them. OK, so she needs to exchange her dollars for pounds. And this is where the exchange rate now comes in. On the screen, you will see that the exchange rate... Let us assume that it is one pound will buy you one dollar fifty. So in Melanie's case, she needs to buy pounds, and each pound she buys is going to cost her one dollar fifty. Okay, so let's have a look at a little worked example of this then. Okay, reminder of the exchange rate: it's one pound will buy you one dollar and fifty cents. Um, what we need to bear in mind here, then, is that when we're calculating the cost in a foreign currency, we need to multiply, multiply the amount, the price, by the exchange rate. So, in this case, what we know is that the, uh, the price of the car was £10,000. Um, the exchange rate to the pound is $1.50. So, a simple multiplication will tell you that the answer is $15,000. So, Melanie must pay $15,000 to get 
to buy the car from Barnsley okay so let us have a look at a little example of from the point of view from the perspective of an exporter once again pause the screen now pause this recording now um, have a read of the question have a look at the options see if you can work it out pause it and then when you're ready to go on continue okay I hope that you got an answer of D for this question because the uh, the uh, the business will buy 20 outfits each month for 20,000 uh, 20, pounds uh, for foreign for foreign customers we've got an exchange rate of one pound is equal to two dollars so this time what we see the basis of our calculation 20,000 multiplied by two gives us an answer of D okay so what next in your booklet hopefully you've got your booklet filled in the tasks completed you've got some working knowledge of exchange rates uh, there's some follow-up tasks in there for you to do maybe you need to re-record this present uh, re go through this presentation once again and have another look at it make sure you can do the activities so that when you come to your next lesson we're going to be building on this okay so there's the flip lesson on exchange rates hopefully that's been some use to you to enable you to start building on your knowledge of a tricky concept exchange rates